So I would say each of my works are a way for me to think through mortality um, and different scales of mortality, both my own, like I'm going to die, and also um, uh, distinctions between life and death, um, living and non-living, and how that's shaping both us and the world um, around us. In each work, I've been thinking about this from a different perspective. In Everything and More, it was through an astronaut's experience of his body within the void of outer space. When I first came back to Earth, after 128 days in space, I thought I had ruined my life. Everything and More is a work that I made after seeing two films that came out around the same time, I think in 2014, um, which was Gravity and Interstellar. And I remember after leaving the theater one night after seeing Gravity, I was walking down the street and I suddenly felt completely uh, deconditioned from New York City, the environment around me. Suddenly the sidewalk felt alien, traffic felt alien, my own body felt alien. And I was struck by the fact that it was just light frequency and sound frequency that had suddenly created this detachment. And then a few weeks later, I was cleaning my apartment and on the radio came this interview with this astronaut, David Wolf, who I eventually interviewed. Um, and again, I felt the same thing, like suddenly deconditioned from holding the broom and being in this one space, like, where am I all of a sudden? Um, and I was struck that again, this was just through sound. So I uh, chased David in a kind of stalkerish way until I got a hold of him. Um, and was fortunate enough to interview him about this experience of a uh, spacewalk moving in to full darkness and not seeing the Earth at all, um, to coming back to Earth and his uh, perceptual changes. Um, and so what you see in the work is uh, me filming at a neutral buoyancy lab, which is one of the two places where astronauts learn to spacewalk. Um, in a giant pool of water. Again, just a kind of everyday material that they learn to really function in this out-of-body state. Um, and then materials that were just in my kitchen, food dye, olive oil, baby oil, water, milk, um, on a glass plate, just filmed really close up. And these materials uh, explicate the journey that David tells about going to and then from back to Earth. I was thinking about David Wool's story in relationship fundamentally to mortality, that in outer space we're faced with nothing, and when we die or we're about to die, maybe we're also thinking about nothing. Um, and so it felt as though someone who's gone to outer space and come back has experienced a brink of nothingness. Um, and I, I find that being as close to that nothing as possible uh, brings out the possibilities of everything else in life. <laughs> oh, I, I chose to frame this experience of out of, out of body sublime space through the everyday as a way to think through how the everyday can be a way for us to access the sublime. So for example, the spacesuit that you see is empty. And in fact, close up and empty, you see how vulnerable it is. It's just some thread and some glass. That's um, like no protection to something as alternate as space. I think uh, I don't necessarily think about mixing techniques as high or low or hand done or non hand done. I more think about what the work needs and what it's asking and how I can deliver that or work towards that. One aspect of each of my works is always both in the research of coming up with the sites and the places that I'll be investigating, but also in how it's made. I'm always trying to 
learn and be unstable in how I make it. So um, whether it's a way of editing sound or a way of mixing materials or an effective displacement, learning in After Effects, whatever it is, I'm I'm um, not knowing how to make the thing I want to make is a significant component of making it. Just walking, I took a few steps off the spacecraft and then decided to go ahead and use the lay down on the stretcher and be carried away. So I think of the installation of each work in relationship to the space that it is existing in. Each work has a set of conditions that follow it, kind of an idea of scale, of natural light, artificial light, the projector, the sound, where the viewer is going to sit. But depending on where it's installed, that will be orientated towards the space it's in. One thing that I've worked with up until this point is um, working all with natural light, so no dark spaces, and also working with screen materials that react or don't react to the projected light. When I showed everything and more at the Whitney, it was shown against a window wall so that the blacks appeared transparent and you could see to the outside world and the colored aspects of the video were opaque so they locked you within the room. So the film I re-edited for the space so that you would have this oscillating experience between being in a museum, watching an artwork, and being in a museum, looking outside the window, and that those two things could correlate to David Wolf's experience, the astronaut's experience of being in a kind of virtual space of outer space and being grounded in the real space of coming back to Earth. So I try to think about um, emotional aspects of the work that can be paired with formal constraints of the room where it is and find a, find a way for them to meet. Um, but I hope that the ways in which they meet are not uh, prop-like or performative, but come from the inherent construction of what it is to see a video in a space. So again, projected light, natural light, where you sit, how you hear, the screen, the scale of the screen, all within right. those parameters. Because gravity felt so heavy, my wristwatch felt like a bowling ball on my arm. Uh, the weight of your body is, is overwhelming. Even my ears felt heavy on my head. I would say that each work I make is a process of uncovering something that starts out very small, um, and every day and subtle inside of me, a question or a feeling, something like unease or fear or sublime, and trying to understand that feeling and connect it to places and times outside of myself to deepen its spectrum of what it is. Um, so I, I try to use myself a bit like a tiny sensor and then quickly move outside myself to the place that, that it spots. But some senses are increased. For example, when you're in space, the air cleaning systems are so effective, there's very few odors. Mm. The filters are so good. And when the spacecraft door, the hatch is opened, you're overwhelmed with the smell of grass and the air, and the, and you, it must be like a dog feels when you can smell bushes when you walk by them. Your sensitivities are so increased because they've been uh, absent for so many months. 